Hey everyone, welcome to another little episode of our exploration. This is our new Facebook group and I'm doing this with Jessica Sanders and Lisa Hetrick and our group is growing so come on over join us over there. And this month we're going to be talking about the color purple and it's going to be our February challenge color. But what's it mean? What is that feeling that it represents for people? It's such a beautiful color and it's actually one of my very favorite colors. And I'm going to show you a little bit with alcohol inks and how you can change that variation of color. Um, the color, the color purple really is really mysterious. A lot of people uh, feel um, calm when they see the color purple. It's kind of a mysterious color. It's very peaceful, magical. Back in the day, I guess uh, royalty would always wear purple because it was a very expensive color to make for their clothing. So that was always representative of wealth. So let's talk a little bit about color purple and let's check out alcohol inks. So stick around. And before we go, I would love to hear what your favorite shade of purple is. So leave us a comment down below. Hi, I'm Kelly Chatsey. I have full online classes and tutorials every month on my website at www.kellychassiefineart.com. So good morning everyone. So I have my candle lit. I've got my porcelain plate. I have my little um, popper for alcohol, 91% alcohol for cleaning up in here. I've got my napkin and I've got a couple little pieces of scrap paper. This is Yupo paper. For any of you that have not used alcohol ink before, this is uh, what a lot of people use. It's a little on the expensive side. You can get uh, full sheets, you can get rolls, you can get smaller sheets. And I even have, I don't know where she got them, but if someone, Lisa sent me these. Uh, one of my students sent me one of, one of these little packets and they have these little tiny Yupo papers. <laughs> So I think these are actually the size for, I think, let's see if this will actually fit one of my three by five mats for ACEOs. Yeah, so that'll actually fit in there. So I think it's two by three, two and a half by three and a half, two and a half by 3.75 is the size of that. So it will actually fit outside this area a little bit. So we could we could actually frame those. So Yupo paper is really smooth, gloss. It's got a little bit of a gloss to it. And uh, this is, I think it's the it's the medium weight paper. Yeah, it's the same as that one. So this is the medium weight paper. So because we're doing purple this month, I thought I would try out alcohol ink this time for you. Or not try out, I would demo alcohol inks for you this time. Uh, this is one of the cards I had done a while ago. I call it Purple Majesty and there's a lot of purple in this one. And I did the sky first and then this is just a very wash but you can see all the different shades of purple that you can get in here. Uh, this is done pretty much by using the blending solution. So alcohol ink blending solution is what I used for this one. So I did the background first and mixed the colors and then just basically tipped it and that's what it did. It changed all these different colors in there. I should probably take that out of the plastic sleeve maybe so. I don't know if that's too shiny for you to see. And in case you're interested in about these little plastic sleeves I'm using, I'll put a link up here for you for another video about making my cards. The great thing about alcohol ink is it does what it wants to do and it's a great medium to work with in conjunction with watercolors, especially if you are real tight watercolors and you have a hard time letting things go very loose. Alcohol ink really helped me kind of loosen up my watercolor paintings. Not always, but I'm still a tight painter when it comes to watercolor, but I can at least do it now. <laughs> Before it was really tough for me to do. So I thought we would start out using one of my favorite purples and this is called Passion Purple. It's by Jacquard. And the brand is Pinata Alcohol Ink. And I find these very rich in color and they work really well if you don't 
if you, well, if you, if you want to work with resin and things like that, you don't want it to fade when you add resin to it. Because usually, I don't know if it's the resin or if it's the heat from the torch when I'm actually torching with some of the other brands, um, they will sometimes lighten. And depending on what color it is too, some colors are a little bit more prone to lightening than other colors. But this purple works very well and it stays beautifully uh, rich in color. So I thought we would just try to, to change the color up a little bit and I can show you how you can change your shades with alcohol inks like you can with watercolor. That's my Sable watercolor brush. I don't want to use that. Let's see, I'm going to use an inexpensive brush. When I work with alcohol inks, I like to use the inexpensive brushes a little bit more. Only because they're nylon, they're not going to damage the brush. You can pretty much clean them up with alcohol and they work. They do get a little stiff and that's because there's alcohol in, in there. Once it dries off, you can see that that starts to flow a little bit better. So you would clean your alcohol ink brushes off with alcohol, not with water. Heads up in case you're new to that. So I'm going to just take my little dropper and put a little bit of that passion purple. It almost looks black. It's so dark. And if I spread that out a little bit, you can see what a beautiful shade of purple this makes. And if I do it quickly, before it starts to dry, I can get a nice smooth, clean, uh, clean surface, clean block. If I continue to work this, you can see I'll get some streaks as it starts to dry and then I can't do anything. That's already dry. So to touch that now, it's almost dry. So that's how fast alcohol inks dry. Much different than watercolor, right? So if I wanted to lighten this a little bit, let's go ahead and put a little bit of my blending solution on my tray here. Now blending solution, what this does is this will allow you to have a longer work time so it won't dry quite as fast. And I'm going to put a little drop of our alcohol ink. I like to use por porcelain plates too, by the way, because porcelain, um, you can pretty much wipe these off. You can clean them up with alcohol. And so I use porcelain plates a lot for watercolor and for alcohol inks. Do not use the mixatives on your porcelain plates. So the mixatives dry differently and they stick. Now a mixative, if you're not familiar with it, it's like the gold, any of the metallic colors. You have to shake it. It has a little ball bearing in there. So now I'm taking just a drop of that alcohol ink color. And you can see I can get a little bit of a lighter shade here. Not much but enough and you'll see I have a lot longer work time for this to dry. I could keep going. So I can go a lot further with that using the blending solution. So now it has started to dry. You see I have a lot more streakiness to it. It's not quite as solid as what that first one was. So that's because as it starts to dry and you're going back and forth, you're creating a little bit of texture in there. So I'm going to take a little bit more blending solution, bring this over here and lighten this up even more. And you can see as I lighten this, it really changes the color just like it would with watercolor. And again, I've got, it's more streaky. Alcohol ink is a little bit tougher to do. So you, as, you, as it starts to dry, if you want that solid color, you really have to do what they call a wet pour. And I do have a couple of videos up on YouTube and I'll link it down here for you below um, with the wet and wet. And I work some clouds in there so you can see how that, it works a little bit differently than what um, watercolor will do. So let's go ahead and I still have a little bit more blending solution on here. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more. And you can see my blending solution is still wet. This alcohol ink is a drop over here. It's still, or still wet. It's not completely dry. So it still has quite a bit of pigment on there. I'm just going to wipe that off. And I'm going to try to get this even lighter. I think what happens is the alcohol ink will seep up into your brush as well. So that will, 
if you're pushing down on it, you can get, so you can get a lot more color as I pump that. So some of that ink, or that dye comes down on the end. So I don't want, and you can see that goes a long way. I want to really lighten that color. There we go. So that's a little bit lighter. Now it's almost turning this beautiful shade of pink. Isn't that pretty? So I probably could have had another one in between this one and this one, but let's just go one shade lighter. Let's see if I can get it any lighter. Pretty close to the same, isn't it? Maybe a little bit lighter. So I can make all of those shades with just that one color again, just like you would with watercolor, except for I'm using the blending solution to make those colors and not water. So now that you have an idea of all those beautiful shades of colors that you can use, let's just go ahead and do a really quick one here on a piece of Yupo paper. I've added that purple in here. I've added the blending solution. I'm just swirling around. You can see all those beautiful different shades in there. I'm just going to take my brush and spread some of that out. Fun thing about this is you can always see little creatures or little things in your alcohol inks. They're like the most fun medium I have ever worked with. Once this dries, it's always fun to kind of turn it left and turn it right upside down and see if there's any little things that you see in it because it can create things on its own. So I have a lot of excess here. I'm just going to pour that off onto the side. You can see we can get those little bit of drips. Just touching that up. And I think what I'm going to end up doing is I looked at it and try and see if I could see anything in there. It looks like somebody riding on a horseback, maybe a camel, a cow. I don't know. But we're just going to go with a really simple main scene using this one color. So I'm going to dry this off. And again, you can see how fast the alcohol inks dry. I did the background, just did a little bit of left and right to create that bottom. Almost looks like an illusion of water. And I'm reactivating that little bit of ink I had on the side using a little bit of the blending solution. Now, I didn't get much of a color contrast here. So I'm just going to fill this all in because I have too much white space in here for, to make this uh, really like a little seascape. So I'm just going ahead and filling that over. And then going back into that darker shade and just making some little trees look like little islands. I have a couple of tree videos, little island videos with watercolor uh, and a couple with alcohol inks. If you want to check those out, it might help you along with that wet and wet technique where we do the trees too. So you can see it's got this great little illusion of an island very fast. The other fun thing about alcohol inks is you can paint so fast with these and they dry so fast. Uh, it's just a really great little medium to work with. So we're going to get the tips of those little trees and they have the main shape in here. Again, it looks like a little rocky coast, little island, and going some darker shades in with the water. Again, giving an illusion of some trees in the water, the shadow, and then just tapping it just a little extra for some fun. And then the last thing I want to do is make this like a starry kind of night. So I'm going to use my Ranger Mini Mister. I've got some alcohol, isopropyl alcohol in here. I'm going to spritz this onto my Yupo paper and you can see this beautiful reaction and you get these nice little dots and textures using this little technique. As you're spraying that stuff in the air, you want to make sure that you're very well protected. You don't want to inhale any of that or get any of that in your eyes. So isn't that beautiful that what that creates? It just gives this gorgeous little reaction on the paper and then I can go ahead and fill some of that back in if I want a little bit more details with some of those trees. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I can't wait to see your little islands and your little test strips of color. And remember, it doesn't have to be just purples. If you have some other shades of purple and you want to try that same experiment on it to see what other colors that you can create, definitely go ahead and do that because it's amazing the shades that come out of alcohol inks. There's, the dyes are just, and the pigments are just so interesting to work with. So thanks so much for joining me. Make sure to click that like and share button and don't forget to check out Lisa's and Jessica's tutorial this week as well. I'll link it down here below for you as well as on top and you can also check out their YouTube channels. So we will see you next time. Bye-bye.